Hey friends, Dr. Motley here, and this is a very important subject today. We're talking about coffee. Is coffee good for you? I have patients ask me this every time they come in because if I ever expect or suspect that a person may have a sensitivity to coffee or caffeine, they literally tell me that this is the only thing that they can't give up. You can take anything else away from me, doc, but not my caffeine. Why? Caffeine, coffee to me, is a spiritual process. I look at it like it's my morning meditation. Well, I usually do a little more tea, more chai tea, because I run a tea shop. So the thing about caffeine is this, guys. Your body genetically could break down caffeine very well, while your neighbor could not. It comes down to genetics. There is a gene called the CYP, or the cytochrome P450. It sounds fancy, but basically it's a gene that creates an enzyme that's in your liver that helps you break down caffeine well. There's another one called an NAT gene, an N-acetyltransferase. All that fancy terminology means is that if you have a very strong gene that can produce dominant traits within these genes, you'll actually have the enzymes capable of breaking down caffeine. That's the difference between you and someone else who can drink two to three cups of coffee and you get lightheaded by drinking one cup of coffee. Now, if you get a heterozygous gene from a beach parent, say that one parent of yours actually can drink coffee and the other one can't, that gene of yours will only work 50% of the time. But let's say you got two recessive genes, one from each parent, which means that gene only works 30% of the time, which means every time you drink coffee, only 30% of the time, you're gonna feel decent when you drink it. Now, I would get upset about that, and many of my patients do. So what do you do? Well, when you start to experience the symptoms, such as the jitters, heart palpitations, panic attacks, you start to lose hope. I'm never gonna be able to drink this again. It's because your genes are starting to express themselves as you get older. The process is called methylation. Methylation is your liver's capability to detoxify properly. If I drink too much caffeine, too much coffee, my liver does not have the capacity to break it down and pee it out. So what happens is that some individuals actually drink the caffeine, they feel okay, but a few hours later, they feel crummy. There's also another aspect of this, the genes, and your body's sensitivity, not to just coffee or caffeine itself, but the derivatives of caffeine. So did you know this? When you drink caffeine, it breaks down into other substances known as theobromine, theophylline, perizanthine, all big terms that mean that caffeine breaks down into these three, which are found in what? Tea, chocolate, yerba mate, chai tea, green tea, the things you and I love every day. Your liver cannot break them down, and then you and I get sad because why? because I want my pick-me-up. I want some dopamine in my body from the caffeine. Now, if you can't break it down, I'm getting a little bit nerd on you right now. Your caffeine will actually block little receptor sites on your cells that actually will pull in adenosine. Adenosine is a neurotransmitter that actually does what? Helps you relax, stay calm, go to sleep at night. So if you have a defect in that receptor, plus your genetic makeup issues doesn't allow you to process or break down caffeine very well, what do you get? the heart palpitations, the jitters, all the things that make coffee, quote, bad. Well, I wanna tell you something. Caffeine, coffee is not bad. I think everything in God's green earth can be good for you. Some people can do it, some people can't. But I'll say it has good liver cleansing properties, helps clean the blood, has high antioxidants. There are ways that you can actually help your body to absorb caffeine better. So, I'm gonna talk about that. I just wanna give you the breakdown today. But in the next post, I'm gonna talk about how it could be absorbed maybe you can start drinking coffee again. And I wanna give you a personal story. I had Lyme disease for a very long time and my liver was very congested and I couldn't drink coffee. It was the only thing that kept me feeling good in the morning, something to wake up to. And when that was taken away, I felt down the dumps. But I found out that I started to take the nutrients that helped my liver de decongest to work properly, help those enzymes start to break down caffeine by adding in some good nutrition. And I was able to drink one or two cups of coffee in the week. So you can do some things to help hide or mask those genetic variants or defects. Don't lose hope. But if you're like me, I do love a good glass of tea, a good cup of tea. Sometimes you have to uh, make some rearrangements just so you can get that nice caffeine high in the morning. Anyway, guys, look out for the next post. You take it easy.